that I've uh, brought. I think it'll be a good one. Um, no pressure. And uh, yeah, Shannon is based in Peterborough. Uh, she's a painter. So she's going to be showing us how to paint some things, um, some flowers. And we can, I'm going to be drawing because I don't like to paint too much. Um, but whatever you feel comfortable doing, I think that's it, right? Oh. Oh, crap. Hello. It, there you go. Yep. Okay, I was like, is it, is it time? Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, today, I'm going to do a little demonstration just showing up basically it's a kind of a drawing and painting technique that I use for a lot of small pieces I figured flowers because it's spring so this is the kind of this is one that's done and that's the kind of idea you can see there's a lot of line work um, so it's a little bit of a drawing with paint for the color it's a little bit of a hybrid if you will so um, I thought I'd just uh, go through this, the stages. I'll sort of do one. And then if, if anyone's ready to do their own, they can kind of follow along. Um, I have here some flowers. Thanks, Metro. And um, right, so everyone else is muted. Yeah, okay, I'll have to remember. It's like, it's so, so, it's so quiet. Okay, um, so first thing, um, well, sometimes I'll start with a red ground, which means I've painted the background red, a red ground. But because it's hard to see the lines, I'm gonna start with just plain old wood and I'm gonna use a marker so that the lines are more apparent. Just because it's kind of fun to watch a drawing happen and I figured, Otherwise, it would look like I was just scratching on a red thing and you couldn't really see what I was doing. So um, basically, I've just got the flowers laid out in a way that I think will be fun to draw. Um, I wish it could zoom in a bit more, but I've positioned my camera in such a way that I figure I can just go like that. It's too hard to move it around. So um, yeah, so I've just got these flowers the way I like them. I've got some like points of interest with this thing sticking up. I'm really into plant identification, but when it comes to flowers from Metro, I'm not too sure. So I've got some <laughs> plant of some kind poking up and then I've got some leaves over there and it's probably hard for you to see. So now I'm just babbling, but I've basically put it in a little composition that I think will look nice. And then I'm going to make a line drawing on the background. As I said, if you want, you could do it over top of a color. But my plan is I'm gonna put a color over top of the drawing for today's demonstration. So I'm gonna jump right in there. I'm using a marker for a well-defined line. And this is a graphic one archival ink marker, which means it's pretty, oh, you saw backwards, isn't it? Anyhow, if you let it sit, it, it's, uh, kind of waterproof so you can paint over top. So I'm just going to start in. I think of it as making a map of my my flowers. So I've got and I assume you may be starting to draw your own working on this carnation. You can't see very well at all. Okay, well, it's more about you doing your own work anyway, but I'm trying to make it so that you can watch the drawing happen. I don't know if you can. Anyhow, okay. Yeah, I can see it very well. Yeah, we can see oh. it. Oh, good. Okay, excellent. So it's very focused on lines. And I'm just doing the classic drawing technique of staring at the flowers and uh, 
you know, trying to look at them, get the petals kind of like they actually are. Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but that's life. So there's a little carnation in the front. And got one of these. May I ask a question? Oh yeah, I do. Can, can you hear you? me? I I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, do you mind moving your hand and your thing just slightly slightly sideways so that so that we can see the flowers? Is it more like this? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll yeah, I'll try. I, you know what? I should I should have gone on the other side of it. What if I'm oh, like what, this? Like is that better? Inch? Yes. This is better. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I just, I, I really enjoy watching people draw. So I'm trying to make it so that you can see. So you can see now, can you? Better. Better, but it's not perfect. This is a little one with a ton of little petals. I can look and see. It's better if it's actually like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I can do it. Little one, another little one here. Yes, I don't know what these store-bought flowers are called. I really do not. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that going down there. And what? A leaf. I'm trying to keep it so that you can see, but I know I'm moving it because I, it's a little bit awkward, but I can. This is some kind of a green thing. That's nice looking, but I really haven't got a clue what this is. Like a bunch of little tiny buds. As you can see, I'm, I'm only being you can only be so accurate, right? So I'm kind of just trying to get the gist of them. Also working small like this lends itself to um, kind of, you don't have to be in a way as precise as if you were doing a larger drawing. I would have liked to do a larger one, but I figured it would take more time and that maybe people would be working on something. Yeah, so that's gonna go off to the side. I think that will look nice.
Okay, so that's how it's coming. <laughs> so I, I always think of it, like I said, as a sort of a map. So now I'm going to go over to the other side. Because, you know, with drawing, you got to keep the overall composition in mind and not get let the scale get away with you. <laughs> There may be the sounds of a baby in the background. If he gets to, he's being okay for now, but he was screaming earlier. So let's hope, let's hope for the best here. <laughs> I mean, some might find this tedious, but you got to enjoy drawing is the thing. So it's, we've got those leaves over there. And this is a many, many petaled flower. So I'm just going to do the outline of it as well as I can. I started in on some of the, of the of the petals. It's got kind of Can you see? Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. and petals, lots of them. Is that a zero, zero, 001 pen you're using? No, this is, it's graphic one. Um, oh. So it is not actually, it's actually a larger line. The zero, zero, 001 would be hard for you to see. Oh, okay, okay. But it's, uh, it's just, it's kind of like, I feel it's one of the larger ones, actually. Okay. Okay. Be it's got a different tip. I don't know if you can yes, see that. Oh, I see it. Yes. Yes. Because those zero zero ones and the ones that have the metal that comes out, then there's the yeah. little felt tip on the end. They get destroyed very oh. quickly if you try and use them on anything like wood. I Okay. Okay. Because I, I actually, I'm fond of those markers for sure, but... Mm -hmm. I found that I was just ruining them. So I, I found that this was good, actually. I don't mm -hmm. mind the larger lines. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Okay, where are we? Here, we've got this thing. There's a flower here. Drawing is funny. Everybody does go about it kind of their own way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm 
Do you prime the, uh, the wood first? No. No? I, okay. I haven't done anything to it because it, it would be um, a rougher surface if I had primed it. Like, for instance, like when I put the red paint on, Yes. I will then use a black pencil crayon because it becomes rough. It like brings the grain oh. up. Okay. Okay. But this is smooth. So I'm using the marker because it hasn't had anything done to it yet. Okay. Sorry to ask so many questions. Oh, that's fine. It's good. It's good because otherwise it's just very quiet. <laughs> I don't mind. I also just like to work on, on wood. It's just a personal mm -hmm. preference. I suppose archivally speaking, it may not be the best practice. With all those acids. Now I am. So the end in mind here is that then I do have one that I've sort of started a little. So then you will be painting in between the lines. Okay. Um, and so it can get a little confusing because you have a big mass of lines going on. Uh -huh. um, so then I like to take a colored pencil crayon and kind of mark it out for myself before I add the paint. Um, and the purpose of the colored pencil is it to give a little bit of, uh, of uh, uh, helping for the, to keep the, your lines straight or well, it's, a little bit it, of waxing? Well, there are a couple of reasons. I like it because it gives you an idea of how it's going to look once it's painted and helps you like decide about colors and things. Okay. But also, also, especially with the white, if you put it on the red ground, mm -hmm. um, it means multiple layers of, of white paint. But okay. if you put white pencil crayon under, it kind of helps it pop. Okay. Which I find, I like that. And I find it fun to color it in with the pencil crayon also because guess I just, I'm like, I like drawing. Mm -hmm. I do too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not everyone does. I think a lot of people who enjoy a certain kind of painting, they enjoy the materiality of the paint and, and don't like doing fine line drawings. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone could enjoy different. <laughs> sure. I, thought, I say that, but I do stuff like this all the time. I don't do a lot of the other. Okay. Um, I am aware of the time. I know this is, we're, we're getting there. Yeah. This yeah. is the most time consuming part. Mm -hmm. There's a daisy hiding behind. A daisy, okay, I know one, one of them. Daisy and a carnation. very difficult to try and draw with your hand over to one side so people can see and I'm trying but I know it thought. is it okay. is difficult and I you know I thought of that and then I was like oh it'll be okay but I should have put the camera on the other side 
and it's not i don't want to mess with it camera overhead you almost need a camera overhead in order to yeah yeah something i but need something job anyway it's okay well if you put can... a lot of detail into it uh, you know you've chosen a, a detailed piece tonight to to demonstrate well it is all about these little itty bitty lines so hey mm -hmm. although mm -hmm. this one plant in particular yes <laughs> yes this one plant has a lot going on mm -hmm. and all these Yeah, I had it kind of in the background and then I, at the last minute I moved it around so then it became front and center. Okay, well, we're nearly there now. One more over here. And of course, really, I always think doing something like art is you are omitting all kinds of things all the time. You're picking and choosing what you're going to accentuate and what you're going to leave behind. Yeah. I think this will suffice. There's a couple of leaves that I didn't want to didn't want to leave them out. <laughs> Sorry. Don't I'm assuming ever, don't ever be sorry for a pun. <laughs> I'm assuming I can't hear everyone laughing really hard just because it's on mute. Well, I did laugh. <laughs> <laughs> It makes me so happy that we're that type of organization. Here. <laughs> this is so great. <sighs> okay. Okay, so I've done a, a line drawing that's very dense in some areas. Mm -hmm. But once the colors are on it, um, you'll be able to see the different parts a little bit better. Okay. Um, so here's what I would do. Uh, I'm going to put a, like a wash of color over top of the whole thing. I've decided to go with orange. Is that an acrylic wash or just yes? A yeah, okay. sorry. Yeah, it's acrylic. It's all acrylic paint. Okay. Because it dries fast. Yeah. But I mean, you could use oils if you wanted it to take forever. A couple of yeah. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we all know that oils are good paints. Mm -hmm. Whereas acrylics haven't exactly stood the test of time, but okay. So I'm just going to do this. Oh, it's and a really have... light wash, really light wash. Yeah, I'm a bit scared because I usually would leave a little bit more time for this marker to dry, but I think it's working out okay. Uh -huh. Like I said, I often use um, red, but I went with orange. And the reason for this is that it just allows, because we're going to be then going around the lines, and it allows um, just a color to come through and darkens the lines up a little. So now it's been covered, so you can't see the lines as well anymore at all. Yes, you can. But, okay. So 
now this is like a cooking show this back to this one so with this one i have gone over it with some pencil crayons so i put some yellow pencil crayon here some white pencil crayon and then i put some paint so you can see how the paint really makes it pop out yep. and this was paint over top of that as well um so you don't have to use the pencil crayon obviously but um so for your um wash yeah uh so it's just pick your color and dilute yeah. with uh, really really dilute with water i would dilute it quite a bit if you put the lines beneath if yeah. you went over top of a color yeah then it doesn't matter but i didn't do it that way so probably people watching may not have done that either yeah i would you can always test a little area and make sure that you, you just want to still be able to see the lines. That's all. You don't want to obviously so, obliterate so, it. So, but so the paint, the acrylic paint and water, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But if you used a marker like I did, you want to mm -hmm. be careful that it is not a water soluble marker because all will be lost <laughs> Yeah. or all will be smeared and smudged anyway. So now I'm just working on the other one. <laughs> so then I go around. So you want to think about what colors. You don't have to stick to the colors that were in there. You can do whatever you'd like. But basically the idea is that you've now darkened up the background. It's a push and pull. So you've darkened up the background, which is in turn darkened up your lines. And now you're taking light colors and you're going to make the lines jump out again because you're going to put light colors inside and then you're going to take a make put a light background color behind it. So um, just seeing. Yeah, so maybe Not to be jumping too back and forth, back and forth, but if you wanted to use the pencil crayon, this is the time. So you can see, um, is there a white? Yeah, so I'm gonna just color. Okay. It's hard to see them making much of a difference really, but, but it, it, it does. To help create a shading then, that's the purpose, right? Yeah, to help make it jump out and, and then mm -hmm. it helps you because you've just drawn it and there are lines all over the place. So it kind of can help you to mm -hmm. see what's happening in there. Okay, good. Is that a Conte? Uh, that's not a, that's just a pencil crayon you're using. Derwent, color Durwent. soft. Yeah, okay. Soft pencil crayons are good for this. So I'm just like quickly adding a little bit of green. Yeah, and it's not quite as dry as I might like, but it's okay. <laughs> Very small difference, but.
on an orange background, I would probably, I'm just really, I might even put some white under the pink. It's going to be a pink carnation, but I know that it's pink and orange are close together and you mm -hmm. want the flower to pop out. So I would put white under that as well. You know, it may seem kind of like an unnecessary step, but I find it makes a difference in terms of it helps when you paint. And also if there are, if there are very small lines, sometimes a white pencil crayon will get into right between the lines where it can be difficult with the pen, with the small paintbrush. Mm -hmm. So that helps too in that respect. Yeah, I can see it looks nice. Yeah. I can see the what the purpose is, yes. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. It's funny, it's like I just do these things, but it's kind of interesting to say them out loud. <laughs> mm Okay, so, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to put the pink, actually, these are little purple flowers. I might, I haven't put any white on them, but I think I'm just going to mix up a pale purple color. I always find it's good to keep the colors light. Yeah, I'm just using like whatever acrylic paints I have on hand. Purples are tricky in terms of not making it too dark, I find. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure, yeah. Are you going on the basis of dark to light or light to dark? I'm just using one color for each flower. I'm not doing anything other than that. It's almost like print, like making a print. You know, in printmaking where they, they would be like the lines and then the colors? Yep. I, what, does that answer your question? Or were you at, were, or is that? Well, I'm just trying to think if when you're, when you're doing it and you're going to be painting it, are you mm -hmm. focusing on going from light to a darker tone or are you just whenever it happens or? Um, I guess, I guess what I'm, I'm really thinking about is keeping the colors a bit on the lighter side. And okay, so you're working light to dark then? I suppose so. Oh, you mean like would I apply the lighter paints first yeah. or the darker? Yeah. yeah, I would usually, actually I have a tendency to go white first. So yeah, that, that, yeah. So light that, to dark. Okay, yes. thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, I had a hard time getting my head around that for some reason. Right now I'm just trying to deal with the purple first because I find it can be difficult. Uh, I'm sure I like that. Well. Oh, 
Well, since you asked that question, maybe I'll just do my classic white first. And I will deal with the purple in a minute. And so I just use an itsy bitsy little tiny paintbrush, as I'm sure you've all figured out. But I mean, you could do something like this on a much larger scale and just use larger brushes. And I might even add some white to the yellow because as I said, it's good to keep them, keep them bright. Moving on to the yellow. I made it very pale. In fact, let me add a little more. Yeah, I definitely think light to dark because you can always darken it up, but lightening it up can prove more difficult if you've gone too dark. Mm -hmm. I made a really pale green for these little, these little bud guys. Because it's spring. But there is a difference between good paint and not. Because there's this yellow, I admit. I'm using Craft Smart, but it's really not very good. This one's way better, like in terms of the color. Yeah. You can see, look at this. 
that's the one yellow on this flower here. But when I add the other yellow, it's so much better. One's transparent, one's semi-transparent, it may be. One's just very cheap, poor quality paint, oh. I think. Like the kind of craft paint you might find at uh, the dollar store. The dollar store. See, look at that yellow. Oh, I don't know how much you, if you can tell the difference over the. Yeah, yeah you can see. Yeah. So much better. But I guess you could actually uh, leave some of the cheap, cheap uh, uh, ones in so that, uh, you know, towards the base of the uh, of the center so that uh, it would give a little bit more shading too. Oh yeah. I mean, I definitely use it just because I have it and why not? Mm -hmm. But you can, when you're looking for a, like a good vibrant color, it's, uh, yeah. it becomes obvious that, that the paint's not very good. I love this color. Cobalt teal. It's good for greens. I think. It makes it really blue green, but I kind of mm. like that. On the orange. Also, I'm doing this under, and there's no natural light in here. I don't know. I'll probably look completely different when I see it later in the light of day. happening sorry I probably can't see what I'm doing Nice. Thank you. This flower, we'll call it big yellow. This flower is the big one that has 500 million tiny yellow leaves. The chrysanthemum. Thank the you. Mom. Mom. Yeah. But that's what it is, is it? The mom. Yeah, I've never, like I say, I like to think I'm good at plant identification, but apparently not when it comes to chrysanthemums now i know thank you I think the reason I started doing this sort of procedure was that I always liked the um, the drawing that I did first. You know, sometimes you do a drawing and then try and work it into a painting. Mm -hmm. I was always like, oh, I liked the drawing before I worked it into the painting and now all the lines are gone and I feel like it was lacking its original, whatever it had. 
Mm-hmm. So now I go to all this trouble to keep the lines, but I like the lines. It's an illustrative look. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. That was a leaf. If something this big and seemingly popular at this stage, if you look at polls, couldn't bring Republicans on board. It's a very big tactical mistake for Republicans, and that's why I think you see some of the Republicans kind of playing credit for some of the things that are in this bill because they're going to have to go. Has their TV on? Can you mute? (laughs) (laughs) Those Republicans. No on a package that puts money in people's pockets and that helps people survive this terrible set of crises that we're in right now. So I think, um, you know, they're gonna have to- Everybody mute yourselves, please. ...to obstruct us. I wonder if somebody walked, oh no. ...please and be part of the solution, but we're- Uh, The host can mute everybody. Yeah. And and so just do that. Crises are too important and I think- (laughs) Now the, uh, the the presenter has to unmute herself. Okay, done. I am unmuted, I think. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah, of course everyone else is muted, so how can they tell me? Do you do other kinds of work as well, or is this your main focus right uh, at present time? Well, I actually have been doing more and more like this, but I do other things. I do some, I do work with like photographs. Okay. And sort of image, I messed around a lot with transferring images onto different surfaces and um, like onto fabric and wood. Okay. And, um, and then some, also some audio visual stuff, like she mm-hmm. went to, I did media arts at school. Okay. Um, but drawing has always been, mm-hmm. you know, ever since I was little, I've just loved mm-hmm. drawing and painting and stuff. So that's something I think I will always do. And I'm, I'm really enjoying this little technique. Mm-hmm. Is it so difficult it, for you to hold back from doing a lot of shading? <laughs> No. When a drawing? No. No, I don't. Yeah, no. I haven't. I have gone in the direction of line drawing. Okay. And I have just stayed in the direction of line drawing. Okay. But I, I yeah, I used to do more. Um, like, you know, if you're doing a super realistic drawing, mm-hmm. you'll want to get your shading right and everything. But now, I, yeah, that's showing now the, the actual purpose of you using the pencil crane underneath. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it kind of helps. Yes. And with greens, I usually try to have like at least three different greens. Different like, colors. Sorry, it's hard to get the green to show up on the orange. Okay, the pink. Fact. So that's how it's coming along. Good. It looks nice. No. Yeah. yeah. I find it. I find it fun. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> other people also who are trying it will find it fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not for everyone. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. It's all a little detailed. I'm adding red. Mm 
for these purple flowers. I think I might just make them a little bit red because the purple mm -hmm. was washed out. Mm -hmm. The background color has has something to do with that. Just making a pink for the carnation. I don't know what time it is. I mean, I, I thought I had everything organized, but now I've lost. 15. Okay. Okay, we're good. Well, we don't have very much time, actually, but. Yeah, we usually try, like we say it's over at 8.30, but I mean, if you've got a few minutes after 8.30, you know, carry on. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, because yeah. I, I did want to get to the background color, which we can, I mean, it doesn't have to. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, like, it, it's all right. I mean, some people had to leave already, like time restraints are different for everybody. So if people yeah. have, have to leave, but I'm not going anywhere. So uh, yeah. Okay. Do you do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I'm going to say, I think this is great. I, uh, I can't draw to save my life. Um, and my flowers look absolutely nothing like yours. So I'm not even going to show what I've done, but <laughs> if I have more time, I think like, I love the look of this. So I think this might be something I'd like to try. Um, I'd obviously have to start off with something a little simpler. So this is, this is yeah, really I picked some very, very, <laughs> there are a lot of petals going on in there but yeah it's just a process and you could always do it like if you if you don't enjoy the drawing like feeling like it's too what's the word like cramped or like too detailed you could try a large scale one like you could do something big and just using a similar process see how it looks you know see how it turns out mm -hmm. um Still trying to make some kind of purple, but I'm not happy with purples are always hard. It depends on what kind of a blue. Oh, I don't like it. It's just gonna be red. The purple's turning to red. I think it's something about orange and purple too. I don't know. Well, maybe it's okay. Okay, this should be an internal dialogue, but I'm saying it out loud, so bear with me. Okay. There's the purple. You know what? I think it's okay. Purple. Okay, so, you know, it may need a little bit of touching up here and there, but at this point, since we're running out of time and I'm just gonna go with putting a background color, which I actually kind of like it, I sort of like it. Yeah, but, I think, yeah. See, there's the other one. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll put a background color on the other one. Because I'm not sure about this. I think it needs, this little orange guy needs something. But I'm not sure about the color. But for this one, I do like a pale blue. Okay. Which I liked. I, and it's, I mean, I have only partially colored it in. But then you'll see how the background color makes it pop also. So I'll just do that fast. Okay. There, I'm just gonna mix up a blue. 
It's amazing how little paint any of this really takes up. Is this going to be a wash again? No, no, this is going to be a thick layer okay. of, um, I put a tiny bit of red in okay. just to, to darken it up and I'm using this white and this, this sort of tealy blue that I like. Yeah, this is a, this is a thicker layer paint. Okay. Because this is a layer of paint that you want to be relatively opaque. So I'm just doing the outside with this medium sized, well, if I say medium sized, it's still pretty small paintbrush. Oh, you're going to have to go all the way through all that little detail. <laughs> it's not that bad. You know what? The worst of it was doing the petals. Okay. But yes, but yes, you're right. And it goes pretty quickly. And I mean, again, you have to sort of enjoy the process. It's kind of, I mean, I suppose it is a very finicky way of doing it, but where's that tiny paintbrush? Oh, here it is. But this one isn't fully painted in, so there's not a lot of negative space in the, in the middle of all those flowers. Yeah, because I haven't painted all of them in, so there are flowers that are just red. So when you decide to ever paint the uh, hybrid goldenrod, <laughs> it's uh, you decide rather to put the goldenrod in or not, then I guess because it's so intricate. Oh, that's the hybrid goldenrod. That's what that is. I think so, oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That looks. Oh, I, I'm going to include it. I'm a fan of the hybrid goldenrod, but I could have left it out. Yeah, it's just yeah. Not the developed, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just not. Yeah, because this one, in fact, I'm probably, I'm rushing here. I'm hopefully don't make a huge mess of it all, but. <clears throat> Yeah, actually, it's going to make that little hybrid goldenrod come out. Whereas now you can probably barely see it. Oh, there's a huge blob to me. Thing about these paints that I really notice is how much if it's not thick enough mm -hmm. how much it fades when it dries mm -hmm. so I thought I was like putting it on thicker but it was just wet so now it's faded away to nothing in some areas would not it nothing if, it, if you would it help if you added resist so that it went on a little bit differently Maybe you know what I've never I've never tried those I've never You've never used resist no something I always think of as like I suppose for a watercolor but oh. I've never used it no I haven't so oh do you mean that you'd like go over everything you had painted and then you could just paint no, the whole I thing would add, it the, add it to the uh, add it to the acrylic and it tends to go on a little bit more smooth although it's it's really designed to 
extend the drying time. Or oh, you know, I the see. Time on but it oh. also seems to it also seems to go out with a more even flow. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? That would be lovely because it is kind of a struggle with acrylic, and you can see how people who use a lot of oil paint would be like frustrated because of the way that it sort of dries while you're trying to yeah. apply it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a that's a good idea. Instead of water, so then it wouldn't, because then I, then it, the water thins it out, and then it does that frustrating thing when it just. Yeah. Like over here, look, that looked, that looked like it filled it in and now it's just gone. Or even as, uh, I think I, I think actually what I would use on that is, uh, your, your satin glazing liquid. Oh, I would use that, mix it in, into the, uh, into the acrylic and right. that would better. Yeah. The, the satin glazing. It's a medium oh, yeah. also. Yeah, I don't, it's funny. Like, yeah, I use acrylic paint all the time, but all of those things I- You don't I'm use? Totally, no, no, I've never mm -hmm. really- I use that for water a lot. Okay. <clears throat> well, you can see how it makes it yeah. jump out. Yeah, that does jump out. Yeah, like that. Maybe this was even a better candidate because it was darker than mm -hmm. the uh, the other one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, so you can I like see. That. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, it needs obviously it needs the rest tight. of yeah the rest of the flowers need to be painted in and stuff. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. I like that. Good. Well, I hope I hope I hope you guys got something out of it. And you know what? That was that was um quite enjoyable. So thanks for yeah. asking me. Very nice. That. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. It was very fun. Yeah. Good. <laughs> thanks well, again. Yeah. You're welcome. And nice to kind of meet you guys <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. does anybody anybody have any other questions uh for shannon right now thanks thank you yeah thank, thank you very much for this like i said i, I don't know how to draw yeah, but this was, was fun good. to try to do something very cool. good well i hope you yeah, got a couple ideas or something you might try with my I weather make me feel in like that. Like it. Yeah, <laughs> Nope. Yeah, does anyone yeah. want to show their artwork if they if they oh. were going along anyone that's left i don't know yeah i'm gonna uh hold on let me take shannon off spotlight here so that way if anybody wants to uh well i guess i'll i'll show mine okay hold on let's try this One, i can only see like four I can't see everybody. No, I don't know why I can't remove huh. you from this light. Oh, there we go. Now I see Angela. <laughs> Angela, I, do you want to show I your didn't. painting? I just what? You can do one? OK. You just totally popped up on the big Ooh, screen. So I uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, it's OK. Um, I don't know what's. Are we going through a slideshow right now? Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> You're probably on speaker view. There we go. Yeah. Now I'm back on gallery view. All right. Well, anyway. Oh. Most of my draw, most of my lines disappeared. <laughs> Wait, let's, can I see? I, I didn't actually see it. I have something in the way of my. Oh, wow. Well, that's nice. Oh, yeah. I think it looks. I traced, I traced it oh, faster. <laughs> Looks like it'll be that could be a cool painting, yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah, it looks nothing like that. <laughs> well, everybody works differently, don't they? Good. Yes. And does anyone else want to show theirs? Mm -hmm. Oh, Matt. Wait, nice. I want to see. Wait, I'm trying to go. I have to I'm on a phone. I can't see. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. Oh nice. I like 
Oh, good. I did. I didn't do the exact same thing, but I, I never do still life anyway. So this is fun to um, do. Uh, well, like, can we see it again? Yes. I think That'd I saw good. it. I'm just making sure. Oh, there we go. Oh, cool. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, cool. Nice. I got good. too heavy with my lines a little bit, but I didn't. All my nice markers died like today. So I went and got new markers and I don't have them in front of me. So I was using these really thick ones I don't like. Yeah, sometimes a thick line is like, but I don't know. Sometimes you can get into it. <laughs> Being obsessed with thin lines myself, I sometimes try and use a thick marker, see how it goes. Yeah, my favorite is the uh, the Pigma uh, Sensei. It's uh, oh. it's made for like for comics and stuff, I think. But they have a there's a a ten uh, mm -hmm. and a uh, point five or, or a zero five or something, and they're they're great. So, oh, nice. Cool. I haven't used those. Reserve yeah. is the one. So. Okay. should try those. Yeah, I'm all Micron. Micron. Yeah, yeah I use Microns. <laughs> yeah. Very nice, too. Thanks for doing this. This was really fun. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for asking me. It was fun. I liked doing it. Oh, sorry. Someone else is holding up. Oh, Jill, you got your painting there? Yeah, I've got mine. Um, I did it in pencil, then I did it in watercolor, on watercolor paper, and then I went over everything with the Micron 01. That's so nice. I did it differently. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Cool. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Okay. Well, yeah. Else? Yeah. Sorry, I know. I went up to speaker view, so now I can't see everybody. So it was just <laughs> lucky that I saw Jill. Okay. <laughs> anybody, anybody else have a have a painting or drawing they want to show? No. Oh. Wow, well, this, this was great. Uh, was thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you again for coming. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Very much. Mm -hmm. It really did, yeah. yes. Great, great. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this then if no one has any more questions. Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you, Shannon. This was awesome. So everybody have a lovely night and we'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. Good night. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.